my brothers and sisters, beloved ones, you know, I want to present to you tonight, you know, the Word of God, you know, and I'm so grateful to be able to be here, you know, to share the Word with you. It's a privilege, you know. Uh, what I want to do first is, first of all, is introducing myself. I'm Eddie Lund. I'm one of the leaders in, in the Victory Artist Church. And uh, this is my wife, my better half, you know, Betty Lund. It's so nice to have her here too, you know. And uh, I, I just want to share briefly about, you know, somebody's life, you know, and that person's life. Uh, eventually you're going to understand who that person is. You know, as I, 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 if I look back in my life, what happened, you know, then I see that God has a purpose for everything. And I, and I know many, many of us don't know or know the reason why, you know, we, we live, you know, but I think that God has a purpose with everything. And I think that if we line up with God, we will find uh, a way or the way that God has planned for each and every one of us. You see, I want to read the scripture. It's very important to start with the scripture. I believe in the Word of God because the Word of God set me free of a past that was terrible. You know, I'm, I'm, in a few minutes I'm going to go into, you know, explanation what kind of life I came from, came from and what God did in my life. But let's start with reading the Word of God. It starts in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blesses, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love He presented us to adoption as sons through Christ Jesus Himself, according to the kind intention of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, which freely He freely bestowed upon us in the Beloved. Let, let us pray. Father God, we thank You. We thank You for Your precious Word. Father, as You proclaim that You are Your Word, are one. Father, and I pray, my God, that this Word might touch somebody, somewhere, who's listening, who's watching. Father, we pray that Your Word that has power, that has authority, to overcome every problem in this world. Father, I ask you, my God, that your hand will stretch out to those, so my God, by your Holy Spirit, my God, and touch places where nobody can enter in the heart of man. Father, I thank and I bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You see, I was uh, started telling you a story of a man. You know, that man, I'm going to talk about myself. I was raised in a good family. You know, family where father, mother, you know, we are a very lovely house. You know, uh, everybody who sees us, you know, will say, you know, it's a blessed home. My mom was a very, very religious woman. Uh, let's say she was a God-fearing woman. She always prayed for us, you know, and uh, I understood in life that, you know, she really came out of a family too where they were fearing God. But through my life, you know, I experienced a few things. And on, on a very young age, you know, I had a, I had a you know, familiar problem with my, mom, with my dad. And at the age of 16, he told me I can't stay in the home anymore. So on a very young age, I came to Holland at the age of 16. And all kinds of stuff happened in, in those days. And those days were the 60s, early 60s. And I started living a life, you know, totally you know, surrendered to everything that happened during that time. So all kinds of things happened to my life. I came into all kinds of lifestyles, and eventually I got a car accident where I lost, you know, sight of one eye. And that's where something started, and I didn't know that something terrible would start with me. I started use, selling drugs, using drugs. I came all the way into all kinds of, you know, criminality, you know, and things like that. And I thank God, because God used all these things for me to see that his arm is not too short. His ear is not deaf. And a praying mother is the power of a saving child. You see, so, and I saw that God, you know, is all powerful. Because at the age of 38 years old, you know, there was a day I was standing. And before that, I was diagnosed as uh, 
HIV positive. So to me, it was, you know, I'll just live and die or I'll use drugs and die. But something happened. I was touched by a friend. He talked about Jesus Christ. And so many times my mom, everybody was talking about Jesus Christ, but the way that God uses this, used this person in my life was so tremendous because he was one of, uh, uh, he was a drug addict too. And we did a lot of stuff together. And now I see this man all changed, you know, singing songs of embracing the Lord Jesus Christ. I met him on the streets, you know, in the, in the red light area where I used to walk, where I used to live and do my stuff. You know, and there he came. He came and visited me and told me about Jesus Christ. And I didn't understand it. Till one day that really God spoke to my heart and said, let's go and see what this man is doing in that church what he's talking about. And I didn't know that it was on a Sunday in, a, in the afternoon around 5, 6 o'clock. And I went into that place and God really talk, touched my heart. I remember going in that place, seeing, you know, all kinds of people that I knew before. And they were there lifting up their hands, praising God, you know. And this brother, who I knew, who brought me the news, the good news, he was translating the pastor. And the pastor also was an ex-drug addict. He was a gang member in the States. And, you know, God really spoke to my heart. And I didn't know when they, they had an altar call. I didn't know what altar call was then. But when they, they said, listen, if you feel something in your heart and uh, you feel that, you know, you want to surrender, it's God speaking to your heart. Without me knowing, my hands went up. My eyes, you know, started filling up with water and tears were running down to, down to my cheek. And before I knew, you know, I was surrender surrendering my life to Jesus. From that day on, something happened. And that what happened that brought me to what I want to share with you today is that God is omnipresent. You know, he's omnipresent. You know, he's all powerful. You see, God can do whatever he wants to do. But the thing is, get saved and staying saved are two different things. And But I started understanding the plan of God while... You know, now so many, 20-something years ago, I can never forget that day because I want to stay close to where God saved me. And the reason why I believe is this. I start understanding that God has a plan. And I want to read another scripture. It says in Isaiah 60, uh, 46, verse 9 and 10, it says, Remember the former things long past, before, for I am God. And there is no one, there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things which have not have been seen or done. You see that God declares here, there is no other God besides him. But also he knows the end from the beginning. He knows things before we ever know, thought about these things. And I think that God, if you look at the first scripture in, in Ephesians, where it talks about, you know, before the foundation of the world, God knew us. That means that he, was, he, he, he foreknew that we were con we're going to be there and we're going to be saved too. You see, and to me, if I look back, you know, the, life I, the lifestyle that I had, I never thought that one day I would be alive, first of all. Secondly, serving God. Thirdly, living today as a man that's preaching the gospel. By seeing all these I start understanding that God is a mind blower. And the reason why I think that for us to understand that he is the God, that what is impossible with man is possible with God. And today I want to encourage everybody that if you think, if you don't have a purpose in life, because before I didn't have a purpose in life, there was something of somebody else that had a purpose with my life. That's the devil. You know, you see, but God turned everything around. And today, I've been through so many things in life, and I saw, I understood that the plan of God is something that nobody can fight. You see, I was sick, and so many things happened to me, but I see that there's one that gives life and takes life. There's one that decides that, listen, if I gave you life, 
and I keep you alive is for a reason, for a purpose. And today I want to tell you that whatever you are today, God, you know, is the one who's going to make it true. You see, if I look how God started working in my life and how, well, how God is responding now to my life is because I respond to him first. You see, when you get saved, saved being saved is a gift. But growing the things of God is an effort that every believer should make. And I think that once, you know, we, we, God finds us somewhere, it's time for us to line up with God. Because if you want to call this, you know, this preaching, if you will give a, a, a title, just call it like this, line up with God. I start lining up with God, understanding that I can do nothing without God. The only thing I can do is listen to God reading about his will and acting upon his will and that kept me now 24 25 years in life and developed myself in such a way that i can understand the purpose of god for my life you see we can do many things for god and but most of the time we do the things that we think it's nice to do but there's another verse that says you know, listen to the counsel and accept discipline that you may be wise the rest of your days. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the counsel of the Lord, will, it will stand. That will stand. That means that the word of God will stand. Whatever happens around you, with you, God's will will prevail. And it will prevail for one single reason, because God is God. And what, whatever God planned to do, no man can stop that. So I want to encourage everybody, whatever, it doesn't matter how your life has been, where you came from, what kind of, what kind of race you are, I, I don't care. And God doesn't care either because his will is clear that whatever he wants to do, he will do it. And there's nobody that could stop it. The only person, what Paul says, you know, there's nothing that could separate us from God. There's only one thing, that's all we ourselves. And I want to encourage everybody that listen. Whatever you think you cannot reach in life, I tell you, with God, you can reach the purpose of God for your life. So it's very important to understand that whatever, you know, we think, you know, we can do with the salvation that God has given us by grace. You see, we have to understand that, you know, we didn't choose God. God chose us. You know, in, in John 15, verse 6, he said, he, you know, we didn't look for God. God chose us and appointed us to go and bear fruit, much fruit. And I believe that if God has done that, he's done it for one, only sing, one single thing. And that's that his name will be glorified. That whatever, you know, God wants to do, he's the one who will make it, you know, possible and if we see, the, you know, in the life, have I seen in the life of Jesus, it's to me an example. Because Jesus came onto this earth. He came, you know, with a, with a, with a purpose, you know. And you see, God provided the purpose. Because God said in John chapter 3, verse 16, he said, because, you know, God loved the world so much, he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So God has a purpose. Jesus came with a purpose. And Jesus, not only that, you know, his obedience was his protection. Because in his obedience, God would take care, you know, of how he would finish his purpose, his goal while he, while he came. But also, in his obedience, there was something hidden, you know, and that's God's provision. You see, whatever God gives you vision, he will provide. You know, and God has given all of us a vision. And I, I want to encourage many people in church to think, well, you know, the calling of man is only for pastors. I'll tell you one thing. You know, God has called everybody with a purpose in the body of Christ. And once we are obedient to the word of God, you know, God will provide whatever we need. And we all remember the scripture, Matthew 6, 33, says, you know, seeking first the kingdom of God and all these, and it's right, and all these things will be given unto thee. So that means that God said, you know, look for, you know, all the things above. 
And many times we look for things here on earth. But when we look at the things of God, God will provide. Because he owns a thousand, you know, all the cattle on a thousand hills. He, 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 he has everything in this world, in this earth. He be, he, everything belongs to him. So he can give whatever he, he wants. If you look at Jesus, when Jesus had to go, you know, in Jerusalem, he sent his disciples and said, listen, go so and so and so, you know, and get, you will see a colt and a donkey. You take them. And whatever people want to ask you, tell them I send you. And Jesus was, you know, had the provision. Now, our obedience is also the power of God in our lives. If I'm obedient to God, God will give me the power to go through whatever. And I'll tell you, being a Christian is not easy. But God gives us, through his Holy Spirit, the power to continue and to go through the circumstances we all have to go through because in that process, God is busy changing us so that we will be more heavenly minded than early, early minded. So his power is not there. People say, I want to have the power to heal. and That's good, but that's a gift of God. But God gives us another power. And that power is to change because if we're obedient, God's going to change us and that is a painful <laughs> discovery. But in that power, what will happen, we will be testimonies of God. And I'll thank God, you know, that I don't need to say too much, but I know that people that knew me before see that God has been working in my life. And I thank God because God revealed the scripture to me in John chapter 5, verse 31. Jesus says there, you know, I don't testify of myself because my testimony is of no value, but it is one that will testify of me, and that's the Father. So if God, you know, will show his, his power forth in our lives, that's our testimony. Lots of people want to say what God has done, but I, we can talk about what God has done, but God has to convict people in their hearts of what he's been doing in the life of his people. Then something else that's very important, because the Bible calls us, you know, Jesus calls us the light of this world. He calls us, you know, the salt of this earth. And that's the presence of God. You see, by our obedience, we will carry the presence of God. Because in the presence of God, we go to people, we go to places, and we represent God. You see, the, the task of the priest is to represent God here on earth. And the Bible calls us in 1 Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 9, calls us the holy priesthood, a priesthood set apart. And I think that once we shine this light, you know, the presence of God will touch people. You know, um, I believe that this world, and especially in these days we're living, we should be not religious people, but people that serve God from a pure heart. With this, I want to encourage you that the Lord will proclaim his name to those who serve him. You see, because if we don't serve God, you know, the right way, we're going to serve ourselves. And God, I remember God wrote it, you know, put it in Jeremiah, and Jesus quoted that. He said, how many call me Lord, Lord, you know, but I'll tell you, I don't know you because your heart is far from me. So it's very important to see how we serve God with a pure and sincere heart. God wants us to repossess the position that we had from the beginning. You see, in Genesis 1, verse 27 and 28, talks about that God gave us the authority he gave us the duty. He gave us the dominion over everything on this earth. And God wants to bring us to that place. Because there's another verse that says in, in, in uh, Psalm 115, verse 16, it says, The highest heaven belongs to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man for us to be those people that will, that will, you know, proclaim and also be the light on this earth. Well, I shared with you a little bit, you know, and I hope that you 
will get what I've been talking about. I want to make you known that this Christian TV, Majesty Christian TV Network, is important for us, you know, because this is where we have also a channel to proclaim the Word of God. And if you have some questions, if, you, if you're in a need, you know, just call 020-337-4160, and you'll have, you will get somebody on the phone, and you can ask whatever you want. You can call me personally, too. I'll be here if you need, you know, some advice. If you have a question, you know, we're, we're willing to receive your call and give you the answer we can give. And I thank God, you know, that this is a way of proclaiming the Word of God, of letting people know what God is still, you know, able to do. Many people think there are no miracles anymore, but I'll tell you, if I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here because of the miracle work in God that I know, and He's also willing to do miracles in your life. May God bless you. Bounce with us. Can you bounce with us? To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah, are you ready, the men? Are you ready? Are you ready? I want all the men to sing with us. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All the men, we have done marvelous things. Very simple. We have done marvelous things. Has done my all the men. I only see Byron singing. All the men, one more time. He has done. He has done marvelous things. Has done. One more time. He hey, has done my. Hey. Now all the ladies, all the ladies. This is your point. Say. All the ladies.
Television Network, and as you can see this evening, uh, we have uh, a noble guest here with a uh, with, uh, beautiful woman sitting by his side. This is our longtime friend, yes. Pastor Eddie. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and and, and uh, she, he is here this evening with uh, his lovely wife, uh, <laughs> Miss Beryl Lord. Wow. So, Pastor Eddie, you, you are looking more young. Mm. <laughs> Tell us the secret because the other time when I brought you to the radio, but the radio program for the personal forum, we saw that you were not in a hurry to just rush and go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. it because of uh, your missus? Also, we had some appointments that we had to, you know, finish. You know. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can see that uh, uh, um, that scripture that the Bible said, He that found it a wife. Find it a good thing and obtain a favor from God. I can see you. You are you. It's like uh, you have your age have reduced to. You are younger. You are younger now. Yeah, yeah, sure. Don't you think so? I think. So, I yeah. think Beryl is taking good care of you. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, God, so we didn't hear your voice. We want to hear your voice. So tell us how you feel being here. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And so, what are you doing then? Um, working with uh, young children, young girls, mothers. Oh, yes, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. And, um, so you train them? I, yeah, and uh, give them Jesus also. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. that is very, very beautiful. Yeah. Wow. So, Pastor Eddie, tell, tell me, what do you think, uh, now we have such a wonderful channel, what do you think is going to be the, 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 the future of uh, the preachers here in Amsterdam? Because our message is not going far. Yeah, you know what? It, what I believe that, you know, um, especially Amsterdam is a city that has a multitude of different uh, races, you know, ethnics, you know, groups, and all these things. Yeah. And I think this is a good way of reaching, you know, from this this station, you know, reaching all these people. Yeah. You know, we have a lot of people. They come here and they they don't know whether they have to serve God or not because. The, you know, the, the, you can see the society here is different from the culture that people come from. Yes, and here right. I see that there's a lot of, uh, you know, breaking down of, of values, mm -hmm. you know. But what exactly. Christianity, Christianity builds up, you know, you know, all those values again. Yes. You see, because in the Word of God, there's everything. I believe, I mean, you know, the moral values, you know, the also the, the, the respect to one another. All these things are very important because very, 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 yes. if you look at the society at the moment, yeah. it's really breaking down. So how do you think that uh, we will use the media, this media to achieve that success? How? I think the word, the word of, of God is flowing out or what? The word of God, but also I believe that if you start talking about certain values in, in society, mm -hmm. I mean, I see that many people don't have those values, and through this media, what you can do is not only by the word of God, but also testimonies of people. Yes, like what you gave. Yeah. Wow. Because testimony is something because nobody had hope for me. Hmm. Speak to us. Nobody had hope for me, and my mom was the only one that had hope in her heart. Amen. She, she continued to pray, pray, whatever, and 
Hmm. The other day I started understanding. I was sitting in the service and there was a brother preaching. And he was saying, you know, his mom started preaching and he started going from bad to worse. You see, and that's what I saw also. To me, life was to ba from bad to worse. Yes. But that, that worse was needed for me to reach the bottom hmm. of the pit so yes. that God could pull me out. Hallelujah. And I only know that God could, was able to do it because the doctors couldn't believe it. You know, nobody could believe what happened to me, that I'm alive now. I have two children. They're, they're, they're 15 and 16 years old. Yes. You know, all, out of, you know, when God saved me, I got married. And then, okay, a lot of stuff happened. But praise God, I have those children as a testimony. Hmm. Because during the pregnancy of my ex-wife, they, they, they was checking everything. Because they knew my record. Yes. And still... You know, hey God, we thank you. They were born too much energy. <laughs> God is awesome. <laughs> you see, so what encouragement can you look into that camera? What encouragement do you have to tell somebody who is watching you from another part of the world right now? Because this message is not only for those in Amsterdam or in the Netherlands. Speak to somebody who is a message of encouragement, please. I'll tell you hmm. what seems impossible with man yes. is possible with God. Amen. And God showed me that because I remember the day I heard that I was HIV positive. Yes. To me, it was everything was getting, getting dark. I said, this is the end of my life. But God gave me chance over chance over chance again. Today, I'm here. Mm. I'm a man of over 60 years old. And he healed you. Yeah. And God every, awesome. everywhere I come, people tell me, you look, because they don't know how much what my age is but yes. i see that god renews every single cell in your body awesome awesome we met you about 15 years ago because uh, if your little child is um uh we met we met 15. you and your ex-wife when he, she with the first was child a baby, yeah. no this first child that's oh, the only one we met 16 that's, yeah. that's the boy yeah, yeah the, the, the the first boy the, yeah. the, the, the little the one boy, yeah. he was just uh, some few months old and when we met you before yeah yeah wow it's awesome. Yeah, so yeah. that now you even look younger than that time when we met. Oh, yeah? Yes. <laughs> oh, praise God. Praise God. Good to hear that. Keep, hold me, hold me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So the same God that healed you is still in the process and in the business of healing so many thousands of people. Amen. We just only have to exercise faith. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. That's what I was saying. You and know. you're also determined. You were yeah. determined. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean. Uh, there are some people. Immediately they hear the verdict of doctors. They will quickly give up and say, "Okay, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die." No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you were determined to live. Yeah, because I, I had no other way to go. I had to. I had to be there, and you know, it was an encouragement to see other people get healed. To me, yes. you know, because I, I remember, I was. I'm a musician. Too. Then I was playing in the band, and then. I saw people coming to the front getting healed, and I'm sitting there. I want to get healed too. Yes. So God knew the cry of my heart. Amen. You know, and in that period, I could you couldn't say people that say to mm. people that you were HIV positive because yes. people, people couldn't understand it because they were saying that everybody that was HIV positive were, homo were, were, were homosexuals. Oh, okay. That was the thought. Yes. But now it's been more clear. And, and and also the way people thought about if somebody was contaminated with the HIV virus, yeah. people were afraid to get close to that person. Yes, it's true. So, you know, uh, there were a, a lot of taboos then. Yeah. And God really gave me, you know, that, you know, that wisdom to go about it, not to, I could say only a few people knew, could know that. But then when I got healed, I started telling my best friend, that's my pastor, I yes. told him, listen, so and so. And then he said, man, this is something that you have to proclaim. Hallelujah. You see. Hey. And, um, and I have some, I have family, most of them are doctors. To them it was impossible what happened, but still. And that made them start believing too. So all my brothers and sisters are believers today. This is a barrel. How does that make you feel? The testimony <laughs> of your husband. Yes, tell us. Please, tell us. You can encourage other women. Yes? Netherlands. Yeah. Um, yeah, Netherlands. 
Oké. Okay. <laughs> nou ja, het geeft mij het gevoel van, uh, dat er st- uh, nog steeds hoop is voor mm-hmm. ieder, hoe ziek je ook bent. Mm-hmm. Weet je, als je dit zo hoort, denk je van, ik ben niet opgegeven. Ja. Weet je, ik, 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 uh, er kan wat gebeuren. God, God is daar om mij aan te raken. Weet je, maar het is gewoon van ja, je hart gesteld heeft naar God nu. Van, weet je, van, uh, in die preek zei je ook van, uh, ja, um, gered zijn mm. is niet alles. Hoe wandel je verder met God? Wat, 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 weet je? En ik denk dat het gewoon heel belangrijk is van het moment dat je die stap hebt genomen. Yes. Dat, en Christus in je leven hebt aangenomen. Ja. Dat jij ook zelf die toebereiding nu maakt. Want hij heeft ons gekozen en geroepen. En wij maken, nu de, to- maken de toewijding nu naar God. Weet je, ik zal u blijven volgen. Dus het bemoedigt mij ook echt gewoon. En ook gewoon het werk dat ik doe. Het bemoedigt mij ook van als de meiden binnenkomen. Ja. Weet je, om ze ook te zeggen van luister, er is hoop. Je situatie is helemaal niet hopeloos. Yes, exactly. Er is hoop. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But what the wife of Pastor Eddie is saying is that whoever is listening out there, you have to know that there is hope. No matter uh, the situation that is confronting you, there is hope for everyone. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor, would you just uh, pray for Majesty Christian Television Network? Amen. Can you release some blessings? Amen. <clears throat> Father in heaven, Thank you're Jesus. you're the one who created heaven and earth. You're the one who gave man yes. science. You gave man ability to develop things. Yes, Lord. And all the technology we have today, Father God, we thank you. Yes. Because we can use this also as instruments, as channels, my yes. God, yes, to preach your gospel. Mm-hmm. Father, I pray your blessing. Amen. Father, of what uh, Apostle uh, Larry and, and Pastor Helen are doing here. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray your blessing upon their hands. Amen. Father, I pray that you will give them wisdom. Mm-hmm. Father, I pray that you will provide for them. Yes. You've given them a vision, Father, yes. and we, we believe also, as I, as I just mentioned, Father, with yes. the vision you give provision. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray, my God, that you will protect them. Amen. Father, that you will enlarge, oh my God, yes, Lord, this God. work, Father, according to your plans. Yes, Father. Father, if this started from, the, from your heart, my God, Ooh, there's right. no way, yes, Lord. Father, anything in this world can stop it. Amen. Father, and we pray, my God, that whatever... They wanna go, they're going to go through. Yes, you will use it, yes, Father, to uplift your name. Amen. Father, to make them better. Yes, God. To make this, Father, a, a two-edged sword yes. that will penetrate, yes. Father, yes. through yes. the nation, yes, further God. to the continent, yes, Father, God. even further to the world. Yes, God. Father, we pray, my God, believe, that your spirit, Lord. my God, yes, will Lord. develop mm. these people, my yes. God, yes, 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 for yes, yes. greater works. Mm-hmm. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray blessing. Blessings, we Lord. Pray, we pray also, my God, that you will, they will, Father, de- de- develop themselves yes. in such a way yes, oh God. that only you can do. Yes, Lord. People will be fabergasted. Yes, Lord. Not able to understand what yes. happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. That your name will be glorified. Yes, Father. Father, that's what we pray yes, in the mighty name of your Son, mm-hmm. our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. Thank you, Thank Sister you. Barry, for being here. God bless you. Bless you. To burn his face And the night's moon passes light today For you alone you are God, yes. You are God, you are God. You are God. Hello. Oh, 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 oh. You are alone. Our God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Open your mouth and worship. Open your mouth and worship. You are God. 